Right, okay, so welcome to our next video for Comp 3218 uh, Game Design at the University of Southampton. Uh, my name's uh, Dave Millard, I'm one of the lecturers on the course, and I'm here with... Calm Sportless, I'm a PhD student and I did this course last year. I'm Tom Blount, I'm a PhD student and I've been helping out on the course. Rachel Day, also a PhD student, also took this course last year. <laughs> okay, so um, we're going to have a look at uh, five uh, videos, um, in, in uh, five games in this video. Um, Tom, do you want to say a little bit about what we asked the students to do? Yeah, so um, like before, we asked the students to make a small game prototype, but this time we asked them to use a sort of a novel innovation uh, in their game. So either they could use uh, adaptivity in their game, so adaptive difficulty or something like that, procedurally generate some content, uh, use a novel input method, something like uh, VR, or use uh, real-world location-based elements in their game. Right, okay, so... Um What's our first game? Our first game is Brain Train. Brain Train, all right. So that's hopefully this will work all right. Okay. Aha, okay. So it's a kind of Your brain game. training type thing. So Your I time. saw this one in the expo. It's Split adjacent times. Sort of, it's, a, it's a game about following the instructions at the top, um, okay. which will be to oh. complete a sum using the adjacent squares. So you can only do two squares okay. next to each other. So it says, in two clicks, use subtraction to make minus six. Yes, an order matters so, with this one. Oh, they're going to be next to each other. Those ones? Yeah, mm. go on. You get a score, depending on, I think, nice. how fast you are, how many you complete. In two clicks, use subtraction to make four. Mm. Uh, those two, maybe? Yeah. In two clicks, use subtraction to make four again. Uh, oh, yeah, at the top. So they, do the tiles drop down? Is it like a... So... And again, once, once two you've clicks, you subtraction to make four. Um, once you've got through the board, four. it will be the case. So you have to do it the other way around. Oh, the order doesn't matter, does it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, in two clicks, use addition to make 14. 14. So, so if I had to guess, they are just sort of picking a pair use and then making a sum from it, and then six. asking you to find that exact okay, pair. Nine Essentially, minus yeah. three. I think they um, have more complicated things like multiplication, division later on. Um, um, but we'll find out. The other way. Five, oh, yes, there's oh. little motivational hints on the right. Ah, there we go. In two clicks, use multiplication to make minus. Oh, we're, we're about to, to make. Oh, so 48. Oh, okay. This is like, so, so is there like a adaptive difficulty thing going on as well? So, so, so yes, that. it's meant to be uh, an adaptive difficulty game Yeah. where <coughs> essentially it gets harder every level. Uh, That's not. Adaptive difficulty. It's not really. Ah, there you are. That's just right. a normal game. <laughs> you know, use subtraction to make. So, four. Four. <laughs> things they talked about in the expo were things such as the the faster you complete the level, the more time you have for the next level, so it's more more forgiving. But again, it, it, I agree, it's not really an adaptive difficulty. Perhaps that means the better you are at it, the easier it gets. Mm, that's true. It's just sort of the opposite of adaptive difficulty. So, no, so that's just a game. Yeah. <laughs> so what are they actually doing? The so the levels get harder? So, I don't, so how the levels get harder? How do the levels get harder? Do you just have so less time? So I or? think the grid size increases but as sort of time goes on. But that doesn't make it harder because... Are they like modelling the player in any way? Like and I think the actual sums get a lot harder. Um, unfortunately, I don't think they are modelling the player in any way. I mean, it definitely seems an engaging game because Dave, Dave looks really intent on getting past that. <laughs> it's one of those things where it, it's really not very interesting, but it holds your whole attention. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so yeah, it, it strikes me as quite a polished game. But uh, as you mentioned earlier, it doesn't seem like they've really got much in that development to it. Ooh, okay. When they talked so, in the expo, it didn't seem like they were okay. really modelling the user. So let's have a look. So a couple of things. So my, my time just jumped up by about three minutes. Uh, obviously the grid's got a lot bigger. Um, I don't say that the the arithmetic's got much more complicated. It'd be interesting mm -hmm. if it started saying like do this sum in three clicks, because right yeah. now it's still just like yeah. just going through the grid and looking for like matching pairs. Mm. So on the one hand, it's nice that they do have this sort of validation to make sure that obviously you can always get the sum that they ask you to do, mm. but it does just mean then the game becomes just looking for the pair that they've chosen to validate on. Yeah, so it gets a lot harder when the grid is bigger. <laughs> so how is the score generated? I believe it's a fixed amount of sum. Yeah, okay. 25 consistently for every sum. 
Um, so again, we've we've seen this a couple of times with with ones where they change the difficulty, but they if you if you don't <coughs> if you don't reflect the difficulty in the score, mm. you're not you're not actually reflecting the skill of the, the player in the scoring system and therefore oh, the score no. sort of starts to become poor. Yeah. Okay, that's... Use multiplication <laughs> to make 192. Is, is there 192 and 1? Sadly not. Uh, can you just randomly click on all of the pairs? Let's find out. Probably. What well, must be some like eight, oh, you're 18 times? You're taking a time penalty. Ah, try right. looking for a 12. Oh, that's quite nice. Should yeah. I do that? Yeah, okay. So you were taking a five second time penalty for each one you clicked. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> ah, okay. Um, so I mean, it does actually work quite well as a little puzzle game. As, yeah, as a puzzle game yeah, it's, it's kinda it's nice, cool. but it's not adaptive difficulty. It's just a, <coughs> it's a, just it's just a normal difficulty curve. So it, it seems to me like they were more going for sort mm. of procedural generation of sort of questions and of levels to me. Okay. So but they talked a lot about adaptive in the expo, but it seems to me like a game that's using more procedural elements. Than Even yeah. so, it's not super sophisticated, right? It's just mm. a random number generator, and then you pick a pair and then make a random sum based on it. But did you say it was looking at things like the time you took to answer and stuff like that? So, or is that in the scoring? I think it's just represented by how fast you complete each level. But what do they do that information? They just. I don't think we actually do anything with that information okay. because sort of your time carries over to the next level. Oh, I and see. That's okay. the continuation of the difficulty. But they did add a bunch of time, yeah. like when we got to yeah. the next level. Is that at all dependent on how long I, you took? I think that's just fixed. Uh, we, we, we could always try again and find out. So I think I was just trying to think whether, oh, they, yeah. actually, <coughs> whether they actually had a model of yeah. the player, even if it was really simple. Yeah, even if yeah. it is. Um, but yeah, it, it, you're right. It, it does seem to be a lot more like sort of a generation of the levels more than anything else. Did they say anything about the model they used to, to generate the levels? Not particularly, no. Um, again, because they're trying to talk about the adaptive difficulty for the most part. So that's the thing, right? <laughs> like, it does look like yeah. there is. So they. It looks like they're trying to sort of generate larger numbers as the level goes on. So they put yeah. some thought into that. So there's the, the grid's bigger, the numbers are bigger, um, they introduced multiplica <laughs> multiplication because it was just um, addition and subtraction in the first one I, you played. Mm -hmm. They must introduce more clicks at some point, right? Because otherwise why does it say in two clicks? Yeah. If they don't, sure. they should. <laughs> don't yeah. Maybe they're just being explicit. But mm. And the colours don't symbolise anything, they're just to make it look pretty. It seems like a it seems like a fairly straightforward way of generating, but again, it's nicely. It does seem nicely done, like they they, they validate it. And it doesn't get locked up into yeah, of, you know, a, an unsolvable state, which is quite easy to do with a game like this. And the feedback would is it? quite nice. Oh, it's good. Well, you say that. You would it, but you could just generate a good of numbers, and then just because you're asking the questions sequentially, you can generate the questions as you go. That's true, actually. Yeah. So that you can always solve the grid. I mean the logic does work. So, so the, the the dropping down of the numbers, the fact that the, that that then changes the way that the question is asked. Yeah. You know, there's there's no bugs there. I think that works really nicely. It's got um, a polished sort of interface. Yeah, it is. Well. <laughs> I mean, it's, I'm, it's I'm slightly effective. annoyed the time does that when you get into um, single digit seconds. Yes. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, that's the mod mod function for you, isn't it? Um, <laughs> So there's a couple of things I think. So um, there could be some slightly better information design. So one of the problems I had when I first played this um, when we started was that it, it wasn't clear to me that the that the ordering mm. um, and actually if you were constructing the sum at the bottom, I think that yeah. that might be mm. quite helpful. Um, you know, so the first time you click here, if it said you know whatever you clicked on, you know, fifteen plus, and then you click the next one and it. That that would be quite useful, um, and the other thing is the colours. They've not used the colours for anything, um, so you could have done things like you could have put single digits and double digits in different colours. You could have put odds and evens in different colours just to help people, kind of navigate. I, things, yeah. I don't know whether that would have actually helped, but it might have given some kind of logical. It, it might it might have been nice to have some more help by actually finding things in the grid yeah. as well, because yeah. it seems like actually finding the numbers. Yeah. That's the it's, challenge. It's, yeah, 
and yeah. sort of it's there doesn't seem to be much skill to actually identifying where in the grid that is. Sort of just look, look top left to bottom right. Is there anything looking likely mm. here? Yeah, although your ability to kind of quickly appraise things like, does matter. Yeah. I mean, that's the, that's the thing, right? If you sort of judge it as like a sort of little educational game for people, sort of like like learning addition yeah. and multiplication and all that. That's <coughs> mm. yeah. I mean, I've got I've got, not bad. I've got a five year old. I think he'd probably quite like this actually. Um, if you, if I think that I mean, you, you need more interest for 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 kids. You need it. You need yeah. sort of. Uh, you know, you need more animations. You need more effects when you've successfully got something. You, you need to have a really good result, you know, because yeah. that's what makes them play. They like they like clicking on something, getting it right, and getting a, a, a trigger and a reward. Um, but yeah, the the bones of that kind of kind of game are, are quite nice actually. Um, okay, so what do we think about the the quality? Then we kind of talked about that a little bit. Yeah. So, so overall, the quality is sort of um, a like it's a nice little game. Like there's a couple of like little bits of polish. Like the time yeah. kind of bugs me still, but otherwise, yeah, it looks really nice. It sort of plays well. The logical holds together. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the, the yeah the the fact that it seems to be relatively bug free. It's, you know, the the logical works properly. Um, that's really good. Um, okay, so in terms of the the procedural generation and the difficulty and so on, um, how effective do you think that is? So. Um, I think talking about the procedural generation for uh, I'll say, are we judging this on procedural generation or adaptive difficulty? Like which which do they think it would the core so they, they very strongly put it across as a adaptive difficulty game. Which it doesn't seem like it is no. from what you've said. No, it it, it doesn't have like we said earlier on, it doesn't have a model really. It's it's just kind of Whereas it definitely seems to contain some procedural elements, which again, not not a huge amount, so and not like super sophisticated, but you're right, it does. It, have it really depends on how how it ramps up, right? So, <coughs> if it's just a function of how far through the game you are and what level you're on, then that's just procedural generation. If it is genuinely modelling, like looking at the time between clicks, looking at how long it takes you, and using mm. that. Um, then arguably it's more of a of a adaptive difficulty game. Mm. Um, I think perhaps part of the problem here is that we we can't tell. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I mean that's one thing. Yeah. If it is an adaptive difficulty game, there's no obvious signs of it being an adaptive difficulty game. Yes. And it so doesn't seem like it's particularly increased or decreased the pressure yeah. as it's been going on. So do you think it's meaningful? Is it a useful? Is this a, is this game better off from having this kind of dynamic aspect in it rather than having designed levels? Um, could have been better off from adaptive difficulty. Well, again, like the procedural, like sort of generating these numbers each time. I mean, sort of the old argument of replayability is there, right? It means that mm -hmm. if you play level one again, yeah, yeah, you'll have to think about what you're doing still wrong. Yeah. This is definitely it. one where replay that replayability argument works. Yeah. 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 That's true. Like that's um, the thing, right? If you treat this as a game where you're trying to teach somebody addition, then the procedural generation actually is kind of key because they yes. have to think about it every time they play it rather than just memorize yeah. where to click. Okay, um, and in terms of taking advantage of it, could they have done more? Have they, have they done so everything they could? So I really think they could have done more with the procedural generation element, even the adaptive difficulty element. Um, with the adaptive difficulty element, they could have looked at which sums people were taking particularly long times to, to do and actually throw more of those in. Or similarly, with the procedural element, they could have <coughs> let you cater the actual levels to yeah. say, I want to improve my uh, multiplication with negative numbers. Mm. Yeah. So like you say, they, if they notice you're struggling with multiplication, they can put more multiplication in, but with like smaller numbers. Yeah. So mm. to make it a little bit easier for you. Or, or even provide m multiplication and more feedback to it. Yeah. Say. Yeah. I also think there's there's different things you do depending on the audience you have. So if this was a kids game for getting kids to numbers, you'd want to keep the numbers low mm -hmm. because kids really only do, uh, you know especially young kids they're they're really only manipulating single figure numbers. Um, but as Rachel said earlier on, you might want to put the number of clicks up. So it's like mm -hmm. if three clicks get to 12, right? Um, and I think that's something that children would respond to. Whereas with adults, you want to make the numbers bigger because that's where, you know, that's where they get stretched mm -hmm. with the, the mental arithmetic. Plus it's like certainly with multiplication, like when it's 
get to 192 with two clicks, I, I would just start clicking randomly. Yeah. It, like, it gets to a stage where when the numbers get that big, it's... I, I, I think yeah. a part of the problem is they're scaling the grid and the numbers at the same time. Yeah. If they kept the grid sort of in the 5x5 five five sort of area, you've got more time to actually think about the individual sum. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see what happens when I die now. Well, is That's a good excuse, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see what yeah. happens when I... <laughs> That's what we've been doing all of these Let's Plays. There we go. <laughs> so, yeah, I think actually not a bad little puzzle game, really. Yeah, it's not a bad kind of game. Perhaps not as ambitious as it could be. Mm -hmm. um, and it would have been great to get a bit more effects and a bit more interest in there. But the groundwork's definitely there. Groundwork's there, mm -hmm. logical works properly, and it's, it's certainly very playable. My brain so. hurts now, this is <laughs> awful. <laughs> <laughs> all right, shall we move on? Yep. yep. Okay. Cool. Right, okay, so what's our next game? So our next game is Subterranean Sam. Oh, yeah. Aha, Subterranean Sam. So you saw this one in the expo then, Rach? I did see this one in the expo. There we go. We put it full screen. Do you want to tell us a bit about it? Um, so it actually reminded me of the game mm -hmm. I made for this coursework when I sat this course last year. Um, okay. Tutorial. Let's go through the tutorial. So what, Play what, with what game tutorial. was that? Jetpack game. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a little bit of a problem with the aspect, but uh, you are Sam, the most veteran miner in the world. So I move around. I yeah. can move towards a wall, and it highlights it, and I can mine through it. Yeah. So they procedurally generate a world. <laughs> okay. Um, and they use quite a nice algorithm. I think it's actually a simpler version oh. of the one we used. Um, it's like a game of life style. Okay. Each block has a probability of being Ooh. occupied and then oh, you wow. look at its neighbours to make caverns. Oh, I see. So, so I could like go down. I, I quite like the flavour text for this one. It's sort of, you're a miner who for some reason has a jetpack and you're reclaiming crystals that they've buried underground. So we clicked <laughs> play with tutorial. Was that the tutorial? Just the... Uh, yeah, oh, I think okay, so. Good. Yeah. They've learned their lesson from the first coursework, clearly. <laughs> okay. Ah. Oh, okay, um, you are actually in a cave, so it doesn't really oh, show up oh, so well on oh, the big oh, screen. Oh, it did show up a lot better can when they were playing bigger? it. Oh, you can mm. full screen at the bottom. Uh, there we go. Let's try to see if that works. Sometimes it works, it doesn't always. It doesn't seem to on the WebGL ones for some reason. No, Interesting. it doesn't work. I can't zoom with the... Yeah, Alright, we might be stuck with it at this size. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Alright, so let's not worry about the tutorial. <laughs> okay. It would be nice if we could actually see something. So, uh, Oh, I see. You can actually fly. Man, even the little teleporters look like they did in my game. <laughs> they didn't look at it. Oh, a crystal. Uh, a crystal, that's good. Oh, that was fancy. Yes. Yeah, so the idea There's is the to turrets. collect all the crystals. So we've got this mini map. Doesn't actually show. Doesn't any... show. Oh, no, hang There's on. There's something on there. Yeah. In the middle, maybe. It's not oh, a... is that the. That looks like the jetpack trail. Yeah. 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 You can also see, like, shiny things uh. every. Or is that the it, lasers? It looks like something or someone it's is laser. shooting at you. It's yeah. Okay. Ah. So it's kind of right. tough to see where we're meant to be going based on the mini map. Mm. That, yeah. like, I think what they've done is they've just added a second camera to the scene, right? Yeah. And they, like, it would be nice if they added some extra stuff to that to like that. super highlight. I've here's one crystal. Here's the other crystal. I'm having mm. more go, and I'm gonna let someone more competent take over. I think. I think right, where are you gonna find them? <laughs> yeah. I think we'd have a lot less trouble if it was less dark, and I don't remember. So it being yeah, less I, dark. I I don't think it helps that it's surrounded by white. In fairness, mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was it this sort of like jerky in the expo. Or I something? don't think I don't remember it being. It might just be the web build is a bit. Yeah, maybe. Actually, it yeah, it says here in my notes that the WebGL build is laggy. That's a shame. Still. Ugh. So if we Very have too terrible. much trouble, we could try using the Unity build. Alright. So, so procedural so. generation wise, they've, it looks like they've used just like Perlin noise, right? But, I don't know how they've made it, or tried to make it an interesting level, because it looks like they've just generated some noise and then that's it. Yeah, I think they've basically just generated these caverns and um, their way of tackling turrets. the fact that there might not be a path through is to give you a pickaxe. Which, to be fair, is one way of handling it. It's but one, yeah. yeah, it's one it's, way of handling it. But it, does it make it interesting is the thing. Does that make it a good game? Like, if the only reason they've given you this pickaxe is because uh, we didn't bother validating I mean, even the crystals you're mining are in the air, not in the ground. So yeah. you don't need the pickaxe for anything else. Yay. 
Right, so get now... Get back to the portal. Yeah, now you have to get oh back God. to the portal. I don't Wait, do, do you remember, not remember where the portal, where was? The portal was. There it is. Ah, there we go. So, one issue I think with giving the player a pickaxe is really? you've got a bunch of turrets shooting at you yeah. and you can just sort of sit in the middle of a, a, a mine shaft essentially and not get shot at. Yeah. I, I feel like it detracts from the procedural mm. element. Yeah, if you've generated well. this level and what? then just give me a way is it to. Was, like, was? Yeah, worse than space to mine. Oh, can I shoot? No. Lame. Like, that's the thing, right? If you give me the tools to basically just flatten your level, what's the point of generating a really interesting level? Yeah, and the thing is. Um, yeah, they. I think. I think they could have done more with the procedural generation here. I should stop talking about it though, because I'm definitely biased. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, so I think. I think what we can say mm. is they procedurally generated something which sort of makes sense, but then they've given you a tool that means it doesn't really need to make sense. It was. Yeah. It's mm. So but even it, the it, replayability argument is. It, the level doesn't yeah. matter. So yeah, doesn't well, so yeah. If, if I can just always mine in a straight line to where the crystal is, yeah. then what? <laughs> I mean, I suppose it looks it looks like a cavern, right? If you look at the mini map shapes, you've yeah. got isolated islands. Yeah, this so, is true. So they mean they they don't have to worry about connecting everything up. But it, but but, it looks but like it looks we, right. But like we say, right? Why why is this better than if I just made a level like this? In yeah, hand? yeah. And that's yeah. the thing. If the I, I think it would be better if they made a level, particularly since you could start. Doing things like positioning the turrets and positioning the crystals in such a way that the level goes say, progressively harder, or or that you could actually put that um, pickaxe to use, right? Like mm. sort of tunneling around like specific defenses for a particular reason or so. Yeah. Mm. Like I think if they were going to do a pickaxe ah. game like this, they might have been better just spawning a bunch of sort of caverns in themselves, putting things in those caverns and having you tunnel between them, perhaps or something. Yeah, almost like a sort of more traditional roguelike game with sort of like dungeons and stuff. Mm. <coughs> Except where you sort of carve your own way to each, to yeah. each room. So it, 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 just sort of that mismatch between the procedural generation and the sort of dynamic as a whole. Yeah. yeah. So the, the the only bit that actually feels particularly playable is when you get the final crystal and it gives you that countdown. But even then, it's a case of just tunnel straight to the exit. There's no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, there's That's true. You like that's the make your way around the map. The yeah. only difficult bit is remembering where it is because the mini map doesn't tell you. So it's, again, it's a lack of sophistication of the generation. So if they had, uh, if they had terrain that you couldn't tunnel through, for example. Yeah. Right? Um, so I think the game could be a little bit more forgiving as well, with maybe some three lives to get hit by turrets or, or a it's gun. Pretty harsh, yeah. <laughs> um, particularly, I think because you can't see the turrets. I mean, that I might just be I, a build issue. I think the fact that the turrets are. Um, you can't destroy the turrets. It's, mm. it's really annoying as well. It's really irritating. <laughs> so that might be a nice use of the pickaxe, actually. You destroy the land under the turrets. I wonder yeah. if, hmm. What happens if you do that? I well, don't know. I don't know. Rachel, go I don't know if I'm go ever going to be able to get close enough to one to do that. What happens <laughs> if I hit this weird edge? And why didn't they make this edge just normal ground? It's kind of... Because you could tunnel through it. <laughs> but, like, look like normal ground. So, I mean, that would have been an interesting yeah. use as well if they made sort of an infinitely procedural level. Mm, um, that'd be quite difficult though to collect all the crystals kind mm. of thing but it would again give a bit of uh, yeah they changed the nature of the game wouldn't it but if they could have well, done like a race through a cavern if it was like collect that. five crystals from this yeah, infinitely ah, spawning map of go crystals on, go and get it mm. here we go we're going to get the turrets I, I think it's just going to shoot you as soon as you clip into it space bar is yeah, yeah, yeah. It, just, it just sat there and that's that a shame alright so quality Mm, it I was mean, it was a lot better than that in the Unity build. Yeah, like so it, yeah, yeah. It like was. I mean, actually, I thought the quality wasn't too bad. I mean, yeah. it's a little bit bit laggy in yeah, the yeah, and it wasn't laggy in the Unity build. So. But but yeah, I thought it it, it played alright. Yeah, you could probably control like it. it. The aesthetic style was quite nice. I think there's definitely yeah. some room for polish. So things like the mini map was kind of mm. useless. They could have like made that a lot yeah. more helpful. To but the they did have a mini map. But um, they did have one, which yeah. is yeah, you're right. And just things like replacing the border sprites with maybe some rock or something that isn't yeah. a fluorescent red wall. Yeah. But, um, but overall I thought it was quite a, it's quite a pleasing little game. To, yeah, I mean, I, I think if there's anything, it's that the, <coughs> it goes back to our, our very first batch of videos we did, which is, you know, what, what's the dynamic they're going for? Mm. Is it is it kind of really consistent? Um, I suppose it's a... Collection? It's, it's collection. collection. The first part is. Yeah, and then the second part is race, race to the end. Yeah. Which, you know, yeah, sort of yeah, mixing yeah, those two things work. is fine. And, and I think it would have been 
quite quite a fun little game, if not for the pickaxe, unfortunately. Yeah. So sort of if you had to navigate the turrets and navigate I, the I, I think what, what, what they should have done is they should have had two different types of landscape, one of which you could pickaxe through and one of which mm. you couldn't. Yeah. And then that would have added in some interesting elements and it would have given their algorithms something fun to work with. Oh. So, you you know, because then it can you, you can use the algorithm to guarantee that you can pickaxe through to every area. Yeah. And yeah. what you've got to do is to find your way through. Yeah, um, I think you're right. You know, that would have made I, it. I think that would have made just, just really made it a lot more interesting. Mm. Um, okay, so does the procedural uh, generation generate quality content? Um, I mean, the level is quite nice, but... It's yeah, I, I think it needed to see some validation. It really yeah. did. Sort of. Well, that's the thing, right? Is that meaningfulness well, or is that quality? Because given the tools they provided you, the level's fine. It's the level's fine. Yeah, I, th I think it's just it's not ambitious. Yeah, it's not ambitious enough. It kind of they could have done a lot more with it. But what they have done with it actually works quite nicely. It generates stuff that looks like a cavern. Uh -huh. um, but I mean, it's, it's just part of the noise. It's, there's a Unity function that does that. Yeah. It's you're right. It's just not ambitious enough. Yeah. So it's quality, but it's a bit too simple. Mm -hmm. it, it could have actually put some structure in the procedural in the procedural system. And I think again, we we, we kind of touched on this already, but do we think it's it's meaningful? Would this have been better with the design level? I think it would have been better with designed levels yeah, as it stands. Yeah, absolutely, it's particularly in its current form. You could do some very interesting things with procedural to make this better as a yeah game, yeah definitely. Unfortunately, I think that comes on to the next bit, which is you know, yeah when we said um, does it take advantage of the fact that it's procedural and I think I think basically um, the, the generation works works like you said and it, it it kind of arguably it's meaningful although I think the argument is a bit weak and that's the thing I, like they, um, they put in a particular tool that basically undermines the yeah, yeah. Like yeah. undermines yeah. the procedural generation but the real problem is they haven't taken advantage of it. They just they've just put it in there and they've not really thought about how they can yeah. use this in the game to make the game a better game. Mm. Um, and I think different materials with different effects, I think, would have would have made it yes, it would have made the generation a lot more complicated, but it would have made the game a lot more fun as well. Yeah. Um, and then it would have added <coughs> it would have added that replayability as well, because actually well, negotiating around the landscape is the thing you have to do. Remember where your portal was? No, mm -hmm. absolutely not. I think it's, it's oh, there it is. right there. there. I'm just stuck on this land. So I think uh, the portal's yeah. always in the same point. I think it, it's or always on the left. The left. Yeah. Okay. Right, so cool. at that point, I think we should probably move on. <laughs> okay. Right. So our third game is called what? We have the Light Guardian now. The Light Guardian. All right. So this isn't WebGL. We've, we've just got the Mac version. So let's play this. Ah. Nice. Yep, looks good. I like the aesthetic. Play tutorial, I guess. Yeah, let's go through the tutorial. Ooh. Yay, oh, tutorial. It's an actual tutorial. <laughs> oh, it's this one. Oh, I remember cute. this one. Oh, I like this. So I think this is one Ricky saw in the expo. Press enter. Jump to it all. Now let's try it. Okay. Wee. Well, somebody has definitely learned a lesson from the first one. Okay. That was. Ah. Cool. All right. Climb on the tile. Hmm. All right. Nice. That, that, that sounds like a. Well, we know there's this bug in Unity, so we just made it a feature. <laughs> 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 right. Okay. Oh my god. So. Okay. This ah, has got some cool. similarities with a game that we did way back. The light game. But I don't think it's actually the same people. Oh, interesting. So when we when we when we went through that game, I mentioned there's a uh, an app game that, that mm. had a similar mechanic. This is exactly that right. mechanic. Ah, right? okay. But okay. but that's fine. Um, okay. okay. There you go. Okay. So what's? That? Oh, this is cute. Blue color. Press J. K and J. It's a K nice tutorial. Red, blue. Yeah. It's a bit of a shame there's no skybox. I mean, I know it's like a minor thing, but it. Yeah. Yeah. It would look. It look a lot better, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah. It just like. Uh, L. Oh. So they've they've so interestingly they've done the same thing as that that first game, 
which is they've given us three colours on three different keys, mm -hmm. which means that you're always going to cock up by forgetting the colour <laughs> of the key. Yeah. What was interesting about the, the app game I mentioned is it only had two colours and you pressed a single key to switch, mm. right? Mm. Which meant that it was all down to your skill on timing and jumping and not down to which whether you remembered which key mapped to which colour. Yeah. Um, because also, you know, why L is white, J. I mean, I mean, it's just because like, yeah. you're going to have your hand on one half the keyboard and one on the other. But yeah. So I mean, I'm probably going to manage this the first time. Oh, oh, right. Almost. Oh, I thought you almost. might be able to climb up. The yeah, I think I didn't press it quite hard enough. Um, All right. Should we just go to the main and then do the thing? Cause yeah, that was, go on. That looked like the end of the tutorial. I, I am glad we've gone for a sort of JKL one one key per color rather than having a. K to cycle colours and three colours. So oh, I can't. Oh no, they've got. Oh, right okay, there. they've got it down there. Oh, so. and they have a skybox on this one. So that's quite handy. Why All right, I. On the I might forgive <laughs> them for that then. Okay. Oh, okay. There's some. Ah, there's some now. things. I presume I don't have to. I think that kills you. It did. I tried what to jump it. it. At skull and crossbones. A skull and crossbones. Uh, yeah, that probably will kill you. So, so the tutorial point. could have been more forgiving in that sense. If when when you died, it could have sort of put you back to where you were and said, "Okay, you died. That's fine." Yeah. Just just so that we didn't have to restart it. to to discover that that thing will kill us. Mm. So here's the question. Is this procedural or adaptive? Yeah. Who saw it? Ricky. Uh, Ricky, did, right, okay. Do we have his notes? I've got his notes somewhere else. Oh oh my God. God. We can, we can, we can try and guess in the meantime. <laughs> I, I would definitely guess procedural. I would guess procedural as well. But, but then again, it's a relatively simple procedural, so if we're doing something adaptive with it. So he mentions both actually in this. So obviously there's the procedure the nature of like the endless runner aspect of the game yeah. but he says they are they have done some minimal uh, recording of data to a, to do the adaptiveness oh but i made it doesn't say how uh speed looks like it might be getting faster mm -hmm. yeah yeah but i don't know what aspects of the player it's modeling other than just mm. you're getting further through it again yeah which <laughs> isn't really adaptive uh, again we've seen a lot of people sort of say oh yeah our games are adaptive because it gets harder as they go on but that's not just, adaptive that's just, that's normal just games. a game Oh, uh, no. I have not seen can, that climbing oh, mechanic oh. actually working yet. Oh. I, I did, I did, I managed to just yeah, get it. Do you want to have a go? What so, is it? so I have to say, how the JKL there JKL? does kind of. <coughs> how do you jump? Is it space? Uh, space, yeah. Right, okay. Does kind of work. Um, I imagine it's the sort of thing if you played it for a little while, you'll just, you just yeah. sort of memorise. Um, yeah, it's. It, does, it did look like it got quite unforgiving quite quickly. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I thought I'd let someone who's better than me play it for a bit. <laughs> and then I <laughs> played it instead. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it seems like quite a fun little endless runner. Uh, that was lucky. <laughs> oh, you touched the thing. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, you have to see how the gameplay varies when it gets, get, gets harder. Is it just... Changing it gets the platforms more frequently. faster, I think. I, I think, think the speed seems to be the main thing, and the like skull and crossbones, uh, I guess. I think again, their procedural could have done <coughs> a little bit of work because um, yeah, so that skull was really close to the edge of the platform, and it feels like yeah. that shouldn't really happen. So it, it feels it feels a little bit to play. It feels a little bit woolly. Yeah. It doesn't feel quite as tight as it could be. Yeah. Um, and you feel like you're jumping in quite a sort of languid, casual way. Yeah. As, as the game speeds up, that starts to feel a bit strange. Yeah. Um, but the I mean the the premise is very good. Like I said, it, it is basically a, a version of that other game. I think I did name check it in the other video, but I can't remember what it's called now. Mm. Um, but uh, uh, it's a nice idea. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. I mean, it looks like it could be quite addictive as, a, as far as games go. I'm not sure how like interesting the sort of procedural generation aspect behind it is. They should have done more with it. it like it you definitely can looks like like that, for example, is yeah. a bit ridiculous. And the whole climbing thing, like you said, it feels like they had these bugs, so they added that as a feature <laughs> when really they should have just tightened the jumps so that you well, can yeah, actually like, do just, them. Just make the platforms lower so I won't smack into the platform. Yeah, exactly. Perhaps there's some poetics in there of you planting your face in the side of a platform. I just, I just make, I wonder because presumably there's a there's a height you can jump and a height you can double jump. Yeah. And how is that used? How are those yeah. height numbers used by the mm. by the algorithm? 
because mm. it feels like like so that looks like a like a height you can jump right yeah but then again you get another one which, which seems to be just slightly too high like that yeah one. but it's not a double jump height it, there, there's I almost feel like there should be zones that they should try and avoid mm. in yeah. that range <laughs> um Plus, I've just been double jumping all of them because why wouldn't you? Yeah. So it feels like they've actually. Yeah, that's actually an excellent question. Why would you mm. not double jump? I uh, guess like if in, there's something on the, on the that, yeah. edge of the platform, but. So, so one of the things that the the, the uh, other game I keep I keep to remember <laughs> did oh, no. was it had platforms that I think they were black, and if you hit them, you died. So what they would do is they put them above jumps and things. Okay. So. Right, okay. Um, if you hit them when you if you did a double jump you'd get killed the other thing they did is they had alternative routes through and I, and I haven't seen anything like this yet so for example you've got this blue block coming up here but why not have a red block underneath it yeah, yeah. effectively giving you a choice mm. um, and then you know if you jump for one and you miss it and you go for the other one you can then save yourself yeah um, yeah and, and that would again it's about it's about giving the procedural generation something to actually work with um, R rather than just sort of spawning blocks yeah. at different heights. Because I think if you were actually designing this level, you wouldn't just design a long sequential level like this. Mm. You would no. design a more interesting level with multi multiple uh, platform heights, choices, different routes through, high roads and low roads, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, you, you might put some more dynamics in there. So again, you might have things like seesawing blocks, other types of obstacles, things that slow you down, things that speed you up. Mm. You know, you've all, all these other elements in there. And although I, I, it wouldn't be fair to expect you know our students to kind of put all of that stuff in yeah. in only a couple in only a couple of weeks, three weeks. Um, I think just putting one or two of those things in kind of gives you an gives you enough stuff that you can then have an algorithm really work and do something effective. Mm. I think one extra yeah. thing, sort of the I, the collecting gems mechanic feels a little bit out of place almost so yeah it ups your score but yeah. then like again if this whole if the whole thing is an endless runner game firstly yeah like having your score just as the length that you've gone with it, like is a good way of doing it but also you're sort of so you're always at the whims of like the procedural yeah. generation of how the levels go and how easy or difficult it is but adding the gems in feels like it exacerbates that a bit yeah yeah mm -hmm. no your score just goes up and then I, mean, I suppose I I'm bad at this. Good job. <laughs> it is hard. I think it's the same as what we've seen with quite a lot of platformers. The the controls aren't They're precise not quite enough. As tight as they need to be, yeah. To yeah. enable you to play. It the is game really properly. hard to get that right, though, isn't it? Yeah. No. Definitely. So There's things. I mean, it's little things like when you jump over those. I don't get a sense of like how close are, actually are you. Do you want to try the time attack? Yeah. And it and it maybe is it's the attack or whatever. It's things like, um, okay, yeah, you know, exactly. You know, what is what is the collision box? Um, you actually, you do have a, you do have quite a so soft shadow there, but it doesn't really help you. So one thing that surprised mm. me actually with the jumping mechanics was that you couldn't double jump in midair. So if I if I choose to fall off here, for example, oh, wrong color. <laughs> but if I chose to fall off, I would then not be able to jump unless I've jumped already. If that makes sense. Oh, I see. Uh, okay. Which which I found quite surprising. Mm. So if I if I drop drop off there, oh, oh no, no. Yeah, okay, so maybe maybe it was just inconsistent. I'm not sure then. So another thing that we've constantly right. mentioned that's a minor thing: if your game basically only uses keyboard controls, don't make me move to the mouse to restart the level. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. True. <coughs> oh, okay. So let's 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 go through this. So in terms of the the overall quality, it's nice. Sorry, it's not bad. It's, it's nice. nice. It's quite well polished, isn't it? I mean, it, again, it just shows you how something relatively simple. Um, can work really well. Like the controls are an issue, but yeah, yeah. like we said, it is difficult to like, get those. I'm right. not entirely sure why the buildings are the wrong way round in the back. <laughs> the isometric but perspective also strikes me as a little bit. It's weird. an interesting. I almost choice. feel like just doing it like 2D, sort of like flat side scrolling. I think so. Might have been better. I quite like that. I quite like the. They they do um they do pop into existence though. Yeah. They. I, th I think maybe they should have done that a bit further away because one of the whole points of doing this projection is you can actually see what's coming mm. Mm. and it enables you to plan um, and again they haven't really used that with the blocks will pop into existence just I think they're one ahead of where you are basically yeah one or two yeah. so um, yeah but overall um, 
simple, effective, looks good. Controls are a bit spongy, but yeah, like but you shouldn't have to spam the jump button like yeah. counters now. Oh, I, I hit blue. I, blue. That yeah, was blue. Was blue. Um, so we we kind of covered it already, but in terms of the effectiveness of the procedural generation, does it generate quality so content? So it would have been better if they'd just made levels, I reckon. Like they have to do it for the infiniteness, but in yeah. terms of the quality of the level, like. I, I mean, it, it definitely it, it generates usable levels, right? It does, it generate, does generate usable levels. So it does work. Um, it does work. But you're right. It, it it just lacks the yeah the kind of the variety perhaps that, that you. Um, I, I think it, like I said, if you if you were designing a level, you would automatically put in some of those other things. Yeah. Um, and it's a shame that, that that one or two of them haven't been put in here. Yeah. 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 And as you mentioned earlier, they could have definitely placed those platforms a lot more precisely to say this is a double jump, yeah. this is a single jump, this is a, or even this is a drop, <laughs> and then you jump double jump yeah. to get to the next yeah. block. So you can always imagine sort of little configurations of mm. patterns of movement that they might use. Mm. Um, is it meaningful? Is it, so yeah, does it benefit from being procedural? It's kind of your point. You said it would be better if it was. Yeah, like in terms of the fact that the levels are infinite. Yeah. Yeah, apart like, from that, as an endless runner, like as if the goal is just to get as far as possible, then yeah, it serves that but by being infinite. But but that's about. Well, I get a sense that you, you even if it in even an endless runner, would benefit from pre-designed sections that were kind of. And that's the thing, right? A lot. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of the techniques we talked about for procedural generation is a case of rather than just sort of doing like generating one block at a time, generating sort of interesting sets of blocks, yes. and then combine those. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Or having a specific goal for a specific section, so this will be a you are always jumping upward section, or this will be a yeah, exactly. they're jumping up yeah. and then low and then really high. And it really could have been section. really good with more validation on like the jump heights and the yeah. placement of the depth things in relation to the edges of the platform and each other and things. So in in terms of does it take advantage of the innovation? It seems like it it, it not as much as it could. It just about does, yeah, but yeah. it could have gone further. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but still, a, a, a really nice little playable game, yeah, nice and game. another example of how you can make something uh, relatively simple that, that looks quite nice, actually, mm. quite yeah. playable. All right, shall we move on? Yeah. Okay. okay, so our penultimate game, I think, is called Beam. No, 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 it's called B-E-A-M. The spaces are apparently important. Right, <laughs> okay. Uh, but no, I saw this one in the expo, uh, and this one is a sort of uh, adaptive difficulty kind of game. So they recommended playing Time Attack in the uh, Let's Play just because it shows off a lot more of the uh, okay. a lot more of the content a lot earlier. So right. was the move was the aim with the mouse. Oh god. So yeah, it's sort of like it's again like a sort of endless runner shooter kind of thing. Jump space. Okay, how do I get off the screen now? <laughs> that is an excellent uh, question. That's an excellent question. S Space, S enter. Refresh. <laughs> <laughs> Escape, maybe? Escape doesn't work. You've already entered the game, Rage. Right. <laughs> interesting. Yeah, go on. Okay, let's do, do a reload. Good. Yeah, that's interesting. So, the, 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 one, the one thing missing from the control <laughs> screen. Is this. But that, that's fine. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right, so uh, we're going to try time attack now. See how that goes. Yes. So, so this is adaptive, did you? Uh, yeah. So obviously there are like some procedural elements because of like the endless nature of it. But oh. okay. Okay. Uh, like there's always a little. Bit oh, oh god, boy. Oh, it's really. Uh... The controls are so quick. Wow, that is. Is that intentional? Uh, I guess. So, so I have to say, I tested some of these the other day, and this was a lot less creepy than this. So it may be being affected by the um, recording. Um, by the recording. So I like. Oh. So yeah, it looks a little bit laggy, which is a shame. Uh, but like you say, it's probably just not even look, laggy look though. Good, the yeah. movement is so yeah. fast; it's really yeah. like hard to. All right, maybe we will maybe try normal mode after this, just so it's yeah. the best bullet hell right at the start. But like overall quality, I think is quite nice. Oh, right? yeah, you've nice, got like yeah. Just, yeah. just the sound and like the music. So basically, you're. Oh, you have a. Yeah, a guy on your team picked now. up a power up. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah. So he shoots the. So you're you're basically driving your tank around, but you're shooting off. and aiming the turret with the mouse, yeah. Yeah. Ow. Okay. And dying. Don't forget the dying. Yeah. Okay. So have you run out of lives now? Is that why the live counter isn't? 
Um, I guess I have. Uh, I, ah, it might be that the um, the mode we're on has infinite lives. I think. Oh, okay. interesting. Okay. So, what are you trying to do then? Like. Uh, you've got that much time in the top right, right to just okay. get the highest score. Oh, okay. That, that okay. was why they said use this one. Okay. Right, I see. Yeah. They didn't trust us to not which, die a lot. Which was, you know, <laughs> which was smart. Good, good foresight <laughs> on their part. Yeah. But, but I'm wondering whether we're actually going to see the best of their game, whatever whatever mechanism they've used. So this is the thing, right? It seems to sort of be ramping up a lot slower than when I saw it. So when well, I'm pretty worth it. <laughs> ah, that could be why. <laughs> but um, when I saw it, they had like lots more features than this, like uh, elements of like oh there we go, we're seeing a couple of them now. So you've got like <laughs> these obstacles showing up that block your path. Oh, that's you nice. have holes that you can fall into and things like that. Uh, oh, you get these different enemy types as well. So I guess we so know the adaptivity works. <laughs> so it's adaptive difficulty, and it's what are they actually modelling? Uh, so it records the, your current score and the number of deaths. Uh, okay. <laughs> and the uh, sort of separate to that, it uh, records how many times you fall into these holes and die. Right. So if you fall into them less, it will spawn more of them. Okay. okay. Interesting. So it, but yeah, it basically seems to model two different things. It's a shame that the first part, just modelling like the scores and the number of times you die, is a bit simplistic. Yeah. Like it feels like they could be modelling a lot more than that. Like which enemies kill you and things like that. Ah. So again, what's the what's the purpose of it? So if, so here we're, we're in we're in this time mode. We've got to get a higher score we can in the shortest time we can. So does it actually matter, for example, how many times we die? Does it how many effect? Like, um, are they making it harder for people that are better at it to score well, or do you get more score as as it gets more difficult? So I think inherently you'll get more scores. It gets more difficult because there'll be more, more things to shoot. To shoot, yeah. But but like, but you also <laughs> like so that, is, more. that is one of the advantages of these sort of destruction dynamic games. Yeah. Isn't it? I mean, we are sort of <laughs> playing in like I say, sort of Ow. sort of free play mode for the let's play. But yeah. you can imagine that this would be quite difficult to survive with only like three lives. I mean, it's quite difficult to survive anyway. I don't even know where I am. <laughs> yeah, got you. Oh, uh oh. -uh. So I, do like, I do so like the way they've designed the mode specifically to cope with our incompetence. Yeah. <laughs> so they, I think they've clearly watched our videos I feel like there's something <laughs> lacking in the adaptiveness here, though, because I'm dying a lot. And <laughs> it's not, it doesn't look like yeah. it's gotten easier, does it? It doesn't. I think one of the issues that this is really demonstrating right now is that it just keeps spawning enemies even when you die. And like so more of these fire things I keep getting hit by. And so it does look yeah. like some of them are off the screen as well, which... So it I can't. Seem like I it's can't. Down. No. It, it ought to be the kind of case where when you die, the screen is wiped yeah. and you get to start again, kind of thing. Yeah. Because as is, it just seems to be getting harder and harder as more and more enemies spawn. Yeah. And I just keep dying. So, we, so they've got like getting killed as soon as I'm. So that's the thing, right? They've got this difficulty level at the top, which is almost like a little sort of debug thing telling us how how the difficulty is increasing. And it's and not going down. I've not seen it go down. Right, yeah. Which, so, 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 I mean, maybe that's maybe that's the point. Right? That's the thing, right? Maybe it's just not going up so fast. <coughs> so you well, sat there on eight. Yeah. But it would be nice, because like you said, you've, you've basically got to the point where it's basically unplayable. Basically, yeah. as soon as you spawn, you get... And, and now you've got to wait five minutes of an unplayable game. Yeah, which isn't very fun. Should we play the other mode? <laughs> or yeah, come on, let's, let's, someone let's, that's better at it one. <laughs> let, let's play the other mode, you might have to refresh it. Yeah, probably. Even now the difficulty's gone up. Yeah. I am wondering as well, I mean, this isn't the newest MacBook in the world, but I mean, I when I had an Amiga 500, right, it would run that kind of game flawlessly. Yeah, but so I think also re recording so I probably play the other yeah. mode, or? True, but I'm down. still. I'm down. Oh, okay, Cows will have a game. <laughs> oh, right. right. Let's see how quickly I can drive off the edge of this. I see what, oh wow. I see what you mean. It's really quick, isn't it? You get yeah. used to it a little bit, but given like how precise you've got to be yeah. dodging their bullets I, and I, stuff, I it think feels the lag is not bit. helping here. Yeah. Is it better on oh, the? Oh, I guess. Actually, if you yeah, I guess screen. watch it from the laptop. Actually, yeah, it's a lot better on the laptop. <laughs> well. This is, this is your 4K whoops. TV, Dave. <laughs> yeah. 
So what is that? Is that a That's a power up. And the rate's supposed to be right, your, your uh, aim. Right Do I get more health? Okay, so that was a waste of me getting that life power up right now. Uh, yeah. Okay. What? No, no, it gave you an extra life. Oh, oh, I see. Sorry, not a health power up. It was a life. Right, my bad. Mm. So, so you're you're still on difficulty one at the moment. So, it will be interesting to see if the rate of power up spawning. So, it, it feels like it's very very generous with the power ups right now, and yeah. I've not been hit yet. So well, that's great. Right. Difficulty is uh, like one star. It's just gone up to two. But you're right. Yeah. It's well, this is sort of what I was uh, saying earlier. Right? It doesn't really model. The adaptiveness is very, very simply modeled. Because like you say, you've just gotten like three life power-ups, but you've not taken a hit yet, so why are mm. you getting life power-ups? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, so I've now got double my number of starting lives, and the game is only on difficulty two. I, maybe oh, I just drove into a hole that just appeared at the top of the screen. Right. <laughs> like to power up, so I guess that means you can right click okay. to use power-ups. Oh. The ones that you use. Oh, why am I flying? Oh, I guess that means I can't fall in the hole? Yes, I think so. Try it. Can I kill him? Yes. Oh, thank god. Okay. Okay, so if I... Oh. Oh. Uh oh. Oh. Ah. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, that's strange. Okay. Yeah. Alright, so quality-wise, what do we think? It's quality quite nice, wise, I think yeah. It's really nice. Yeah. It's a very polished game. Sort of, uh, it's actually quite fun as well, isn't it? You kind of, yeah, it, it is. Fun. It's, it's Although classic, you dart around like an absolute, you know, insane fly or something, that, <laughs> that is actually quite fun. Like the actual, like the like the destruction dynamic is like super well handled, just by like the, the mm. noise of the lasers, the little yeah. explosions you get when you hit something. It's super <laughs> satisfying to like. Blast yeah, it's great. And and there is, there is something nice about setting it up so that you are better than the enemies that are coming at you, yeah. but. The difficulty comes in the numbers, mm. right? That that gives you that kind of sense. So it feels sense like it's it's scaled things back right now, but I'm not quite sure why. I think it might be wave based. Yeah, I think you destroyed a wave. So quality's good, I think. Um, yeah, I mean it, it is definitely fun. Uh, okay, what about the procedural generation then? Do we? Oh, sorry, the adaptive difficulty. Are I we? I can't really see what it's doing, to be honest. Is it is it effective? Seven lives. So, mm. so, yeah. so what is the adaptive meant to be doing, Tom? So they model they model the um, the score and the deaths. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. so, so presumably what they've done is they take the idea of a of a design game where you have a linear ramp up, and they said rather than make it a linear ramp up, it's always going to ramp up, but it will plateau. And when the plateaus change depends on your performance. I think that's what they've done for you. Yeah. And then and then whichever difficulty level you're on, that determines the number of enemies, which then determines the number of things you've got to destroy, which oh determines Christ. the score. So So they did say that uh, like I say, they model uh, sort of death by hole separately and use that to control the number of holes. Yeah. And I think it's a bit of a shame that they didn't sort of carry that aspect through with like the rest yeah. of the other things. Yeah. This this feels a little unfair right now, actually. It does seem a very sudden jump from like difficulty four yeah, to whatever yeah. this is. So like there's six as I mean well. actually getting adaptive difficulty right is is again really difficult. I mean yeah. you can make it work, you can definitely get something where it responds to action. But actually getting it so that it kind of hits that sweet spot and enables mm. that that sense of flow. Oh, I'm just stuck. I just feel really like hard. this is very adaptive. Like modeling on score is perhaps not the best way to do it because yeah. you're going to kill the enemies you kill, the ones that show up. Mm. You don't have a choice. So do you think doing what Tom said and having a bit more granularity and looking at how you respond to different types of enemies and that would be more effective? Yeah, exactly. It, it feels like while I like the way it has sort of ramped up up until now. It feels like at some point it just goes, here, have more enemies that you physically can't yeah. dodge. I think Especially since they instantly <coughs> kill you on hitting them. Yeah. Think, but part of the problem though is if you if you do do it on that granular thing, then you lose the simplicity of there's more stuff on screen, therefore your score's going to be higher. Yeah. And you, you're back to that problem of how do you actually measure somebody's score. Because you'd be making it easier for them. Yeah. Without, mm. without necessarily making it harder for them to score. So I almost feel like the the type of game they've gone for, you, you they almost needed to do that, hmm. but it just maybe they haven't quite got the the granularity right. Um, so you know you start off because you start off and it feels easy, 
and then you go through this mm. period where it feels about right and then you get to a point where it's too difficult and it just stays at too difficult yeah so um, but you know so I'm mean, difficulty one and this is uh, yeah but your standard but your sure standard that. linear difficulty slope that is also the case I guess mm. um, so what about is it meaningful do you think it, it was do you think they'd have been better off having pre-designed waves um, I think it would be better than as it is with predefined pre waves, but I feel like with a little bit of tweaking, it yeah, could have been like if they took the balance of it, then I think it actually would be yeah. super meaningful. Yeah. The, yeah. Um, uh, so when I was yeah. talking to them about why they felt the adaptivity made it better, they said predefined because of course they did. But they, <laughs> was, they, they also were talking about how they wanted a game that was simple to learn and hard to master. Yeah. Okay. Even if they'd have done it more like wave based and had how you mm. perform on the wave. Like they do that a little bit, but Yeah. It it would be nice if they had a metric for sort of how difficult a particular wave was going to be. Yeah. It seems like it doesn't correctly spot when it's gone into the obscenely difficult territory. Which you don't yes. think should be that difficult like if you're dying every three seconds or whatever. Mm. So again, one of the uh, so that's the thing, right? If they just lowered the difficulty. Because yeah. they from what we've seen of it, it looks like the difficulty will sort of plateau, but it won't ever go down. Yes. Yeah. So that's probably all they need to do to make it really effective. I mean, mm. one, um, of the, one of the um, nice ways we've seen yeah. of doing that is to adjust the score. So rather than saying, right, we've reached this point, you're always going to be at this difficulty this far into the game, they say, okay, we'll make it a lot easier for you, but you're not going to score as fast. Yeah. And, and, that, and that would work with this, because mm. of said because of the destruction dynamic mm. so okay so in terms of not taking advantage of it is that the main thing we think they've they've made a mistake at yeah still is it's undoubtedly a, a fun yeah, polish it, yes it is. it is fun though. yeah I mean they, they've done a really nice job as much as anything just those little balance issues yeah. okay I think we should probably move on yep. okay so our last game is tiny racers Wait, let's try the full screen just in case. <laughs> I think we're getting a bit optimistic at this point. Yeah. Wait, the Tiny Racers is a. Oh, is it a racing delay. game? It is indeed a racing game. Is Ooh. it also tiny? It Ooh, is. Nice music. So, this was a procedural generation game whereby just that essentially you race around a procedurally generated course. <laughs> that, I have to say, that is a really nice. Little start screen. The music it? is it's so really cute. cute. <laughs> very, very well done. And, and even like this little dynamic effect to make it look less, you know, that the flowing particles. That's music. Very nice. So no one gets it. Um, okay. Right. <laughs> Controls. Right. So I'll I'm on the left, so I'll be wazzed. Okay, I'll I'll click back. Um <laughs> start. Yeah. And you're on the you so on the arrows. Right, the the aim of this game. Uh, three, five. Uh let's do let's just do one. Go, go for one. Go, okay. <laughs> let's see how long it takes and then some other you know, the other's gonna go to. Right. Give it a second, I think it's proceeding to right. Right. Ah, okay. Ooh. Oh, uh, no. Oh, no. If this, oh is, no. If this is if this is laggy, it'll be... Where am I going? There's look trees at, in the look way. At the, uh, ah, good, good I job. I haven't seen it with trees on before, actually. This is, also, uh, what am I? Which oh one am God. I? Why? Who built trees on a racetrack? <laughs> so, let's start what? by talking about the sophistication of their procedural ah, generation. I'm, why? <laughs> I'm, 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 gr I'm green, oh, by the no. way. Oh, <laughs> so, no. Interesting. I've not seen the trees ah, fall so, on the track Oh, Oh, no, I got stuck on a cone. I hate it when happens. Right. Oh, God. <laughs> ah. Ah. Oh, my. So Hang this, on. this was inevitable, really, wasn't yes. it? <laughs> what am I supposed to, What's that? What's that? So the aim thing? is to race around the track. The purple is the place where the leader currently has to get to. The, what? And the, so the person who's in the Shouldn't there be lead, two different coloured? So there is, are, the, is there the reason. The, oh. But one of them's off the screen now. So, uh, yes. So whose who's colour is that? I mine. think you've driven so far away from the checkpoint that you have uh, to yeah, go back in. This is definitely mine. <laughs> the, the controls are God. a bit over the top. It's a nightmare. <laughs> I can't get past the cones. <laughs> I, can't, I can't help but feel it fits the aesthetic of the game quite nicely, though. I've got to be honest. Why when I'm on the M4, trees? I can bash the cones out of the way a lot easier. Yeah, literally. <laughs> literally, why are those trees uh, there? And like, why? This, uh, this would be such a nice procedurally generated track. If it wasn't covered in trees, why? What? <laughs> so I'm, I'm, again, I've not seen the it's, trees before. I they think, didn't occur in the expo. So, so I tell you what, might be a, the might reason be a that I problem. think we're both having such horrible problems with the control 
is that it's you, you can only steer when, when you're, you're moving. Is that the yeah. same? Which thing which is sort of makes sense because you're a car, but oh oh. Oh, someone completed oh, the first. Oh, uh, there we go. I did. But, <laughs> what it, but, but what you'd expect is you'd expect your wheels to, to move so that when you press left and then press forward, you immediately go off yeah, to left. Yeah, turning is a bit. And it doesn't do that. So, you, yeah, so, actually, forward, actually, then. so actually, what happens is you can only change the direction of travel once you're travelling. And that, that makes it a real pain. So, mm. we've noticed that in a lot of these games. Yeah. I, Should we let's go for it? Well, have, have another go. Let's have a look at a different go, track. Go for yeah. three rounds. Three rounds. Blood of punishment. All right. So yes, the track is the procedurally generated element. No trees. In this. Oh, there's no there trees. There are fallen over cones there. Oh my god, it's so so. Sensitive. You see that one of them is now a different colour. That's for the second player to get through. Right. So mine are mine are these You're kind of. So I feel that the camera should probably ah, always have that. So in. why have I got to? So why do I have mm. to go through that? Why can't I just go for it up here? Because because it's you a checkpoint like racing game. Because you could otherwise just keep going around the finish line. I guess. Or just. Yeah, yeah, you could, you could all just cut, cut across the track. But they ah, could make okay. it so that you couldn't do but that. But why isn't the checkpoint a bar across the track? Why is it a circle on the track? Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure. I'm just going to reverse up the game. It seems the easiest way. Because it kind of forces you to drive through the uh, middle of the track. Ah, uh, oh, it's a nightmare. Yeah, it is. It's just like Absolute driver's, driver's end or something. No, driving is easier it, than It this. feels like the kind of thing that... <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> it's, the, it's the sort of thing where it it should be fun because you sort of get the hang of it and then but you don't ever get the hang of it, it and the cones are an absolute pain so I because you get they stuck deliberately on chose to put the cones there I think because they're a pain the 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 the, the, Why? the little animation of you bashing the cone out of the way is quite fun but the cones should just continue to bounce and get out your way. Yeah, they should. You just get stuck. They should and then have you... way less mass and just fly everywhere. Yeah. Oh, I, I managed to reverse onto one. Oh. 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 Wait, oh. it starts every single lap again like that. That's it, not right. Not every lap. It's a different track. Oh. Yes. Oh, so it so does. Every, it, so we round. said three rounds, not three laps. Yes. Okay, yeah, I see, so I see. also, did you notice then that my checkpoint appeared behind me? Which is a bit really? Irritating. That's not ideal. Uh, uh, I'm not uh, sure it's possible for the checkpoint. How did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> I can't get my checkpoint. I'm my steering, my steering circle is terrible. <laughs> right, ah, there we go. Ah, <laughs> uh, no. Also, it does, it does feel really. It reminds me of those really tiny remote control cars that are just. And also, yes, yes, oh, no. yes. yeah. Getting the hang of it. Why is no, that actually, actually, there? No, actually, actually, I, I think I may have. I think the problem is we've swapped checkpoint colours. Well, we? yeah, that's the Yeah, because so I'm behind for now. the person in the lead. That's a bit annoying. Yeah, oh, why, why the not purple's just. The, what? Why not just orange and green? <laughs> no, that is, that is crazy. Yeah, absolutely. That's the way it should have been. That is crazy because I've just been going for the same colour ones. Ah, right. And it worked last time because I was Cause you were a asked. lot behind. <laughs> But now oh, you're going to win. Gonna no. win. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's all down to the final race. It'd be kind of nice if there was like oh. a little. Ooh, Why is that checkpoint there? I'm not sure. That's because that's... that is a bend, that's why. And right. it seems to put okay. them at like. Okay. Every... Oh, okay. no. Okay, okay. so there's two checkpoints there. So, so there also seems to be a real problem with oversteering. Yeah. And I. <laughs> also, just it'd be really nice to like to see the entire lap before you start. So just like yes, really zoomed yeah. out, you were, this is what the track looks like. Or like a mini map. Because just then you both like zoomed straight off like from the starting line and then we're like, oh that's a turn, whoops. I mean, a, a certain amount of silly control can be fun, but I think it perhaps takes it uh, yeah. a I'm little bit too far. It's a silly like, control I don't know if I'm in the lead the or not. Have I missed a checkpoint? You've missed yeah. that it's, mine? It's a while away. And that's what? the thing, right? There's no indication which one you should be going for. Where's my checkpoint? There's, not, e there's not even anything saying... But there's no other checkpoint! Oh, it's over there. Yeah. Oh, that's what? Oh. I drove past that. So I did actually drive through that, I'm pretty sure of it. So you it did, spawned two checkpoints right in the... Yeah, uh, there was, there was two, because really I had to go call. back and get them. Yeah, I, I think not having the checkpoints go across the whole track was a mistake. Yeah, definitely. Mm. So, I think this is a really nice idea for a game. Yeah. But the controls are... Oh, so hang on, this is our fourth one. I thought we said this three. Maybe we said five. No, no, it's definitely no, four. No, it's definitely the fourth one. Yeah. Right. So this I looks a lot like the first. I think I'm stuck, well. mate. Can you can you ram me? 
<laughs> I don't know if I'm I can stuck. or not. Not I'm gonna stuck. lie. <laughs> yeah, I'm stuck. <laughs> I, 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 we'll, leave, we'll leave Rage to unsick yeah, Dave. Right. Come on, just, just those cones there. Just those ones. I'm trying. Hey! Oh no, no, you, you missed You missed oh. the one cup. No, I'm still stuck on a cone. Should, should we talk about the procedural generation of this then? Yeah, I okay. think... Okay, well, well let's, go, let's, talk, let's go for quality. So, oh, in yeah. terms of quality then? My... In terms of quality... It the looked, controls I'll be honest, from work. here it looks fun, but from there it looks infuriating. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that it's just a shame that they've done... And I don't quite know what it is, whether they've gone for the, the whole, you know, <laughs> Gran Turismo turning circle car thing where where you don't you're not just Ah, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> right. You're not ah. oh, <laughs> let, let me repay you. <laughs> so um I mean it's an yeah. So so basically I think they're they're modelling how far you've turned the steering wheel and, and that's why it, it it's really Really so that, that doesn't work very well oh, with button controls, unfortunately. No, Help. no. With a, with a joystick, it might work. With a joystick, so. it works, or even with a mouse, it might work. Help. But with Are you stuck now? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's one cone oh. underneath. Hang on. Thanks. Oh no, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. it, it, it looks from here to be quite a fun, silly little game. Yeah, and, and but I think I think I think fun with, is a bit with, much. With, <laughs> with, a, with, a, they, with some refining, oh, like that's like with a couple of tweaks, it could be a with fun, a couple fun of tweaks. Yes. They could really have made it a good game, and it's just a sh oh no, no just like, <laughs> I've mounted a cone again. Um, <laughs> hang on, is that oh yeah? Ah. Oh. <laughs> so I think I think yeah, it's just uncontrollable. <laughs> and while there is some fun to being completely wildly out of control. Yeah. No. It's not micro machines, all right. No, yeah. micro uh, machines is fantastic. Like <laughs> all right, so. Okay, so. Generation. So they actually had quite a sophisticated algorithm for for doing this. <laughs> You're definitely doing more than three laps. Yeah. yeah. Well, kind of, so go on. How did it work? So they sort of defined an area, generated a bunch of sort of random points within that area, and took sort of a, a convex hull. They picked all the outer points to make a polygon. Mm. Yeah. Then they generated a Bezier curve or, or, or a calvert rom spline I have <laughs> between, they've, they've between made that each up. point <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right and um, yeah they've sort, of, they've sort of generated specific Bezier curves anyway between each mm -hmm. each okay. point in their polygon okay so ignoring and muted it a little bit ignoring the actual algorithms that they've used what do you reckon of the tracks you like, a couple of them. Um, it's quite usable, but it's hard to tell because the controls are so bad. Yeah. They're, but yeah. they, I think, I think that that they they could be quite good actually. They they're fine. But I mean, I do wonder again though whether whether there's just a sort of a slight lack of features. Yeah, there basically. Oh, sorry. Three rounds, I think, must be three wins by one person. Oh, okay. Uh, that would be why there's so many. Okay. Do, should we swap? Do you guys want to? Yeah, yeah, okay. So, yeah, okay. So, I mean, I think I think it's another example of it generating an effective. So it's just yeah, so just Wazda and the and the arrow keys. Okay, we'll just do one. So I think I think it's another example of them generating something that's perfectly effective, um, but it's it just not having very much to work with, and. Like the lamppost being in the middle of the track there, that's not ideal. Wait, am I not in the lead? Yeah, yeah. you're in the, the lead. I'm in the lead. And the fact that you can get those corners that are so close, you basically yeah. get two checkpoints. Like that's I think that's, what, I think that's what's happening there, right? Yeah. That's why that lamppost is there, it's because it's such yeah. a really sharp. So that's the thing, right? Yeah. These really sharp corners <laughs> would actually be quite fun and interesting if the controls were good, but they're not. Yeah. Yes. The turning circle is too yeah. wide to get around yeah. these corners. Yeah. yeah. And also, whenever you do a car game, you, you have to have a drifting in. Oh, the, why are the cones made of concrete? It's a law. This is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they are they are really annoying sticky cones. Um, Callum's just blocked my path. Is, leaving so, a so for me, the more interesting oh. question is, is, <laughs> is the innovation meaningful in terms of gameplay? So they had a really interesting answer for this one, actually, in the expo. Did they say it was replayable? They did, but there was, there was context for it. Okay. So apparently with racing games, yeah. you can get, the, get it to be... At particularly competitive levels, yes. where people memorise the track, yes, and it's therefore, the game. yeah, it 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 is, um, but but then it makes it hard to compete with people who know the track so well, and yeah. by the, the justification okay. for this was by randomising the track, you don't. I think that's a pretty reasonable justification for it, really. Mm. 
be nice it, if it had that option I to replay at the same level. So I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I seed option would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's sort of true, but if you compare how fun a design track would be yeah. to a to an elite, I, I'm, yeah. I'm not 100% convinced. Yeah, so I think the fact that it's just one lap of it almost works in its favour because if it is like just not the best track of the yeah, bunch then you just do one of it and then it's gone and you move on to the next I, one I think that. to I think to be honest if if the controls were were a bit more forgiving and if the checkpoints were bands across the track rather than well I, actually I think we'd have probably had quite a different experience yeah. playing it and yeah. Yeah. Really, the generation was a lot more effective than so I think the reason the checkpoints seem to be in the centre of the track rather than across it, like you say, is because of the because of some of those sharp corners to yeah. encourage you to actually go around rather than just yeah. sort of go through the middle and cull the corners. Yeah, but uh, okay. Um, does it take advantage of it? Does it? Is there anything it should be doing that? It should be checking that you've not got checkpoints right next to each other. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. We and, have and them that spawning, spawning behind us. Well, and just yeah. spawning like trees across the track. Yeah, and that, that was. Um, yeah, but other than other than the kind of the improvements to the algorithm itself, oh, uh, yeah, is there anything right, that could yeah. be in the game design that would be more interesting to do with the, or have or have they taken advantage of it? Does it? I think with what they've got, they seem to have taken advantage of it relatively well. They could have done things like um, a, a little bit like Mario Kart with items or something, or they could yeah. have. Or they could have made it so you had sort of different cars, so some of them turn faster <coughs> and generate sort of tighter tracks. But, but fundamentally, that's just but making yeah, it more yeah, complex, I suppose. It, it, it is. Better. I think with the meaningfulness of the actual generation, I think I think they handle it quite well. But like I say, mm. having this sort of just it just the sort of one lap of each track, and then moving on to the next one, so you get quite a variety yeah. of them. Mm. So even when we were just doing first to three, you guys saw quite a lot of tracks, and they were yeah, all, we did, yeah. like the problem is none of them stood out as being super different they were all just mm. well it's mostly round with a couple of tiny little bends in it yeah like i almost feel that maybe they could have done it a lot, like weirdly by doing a simpler algorithm than the one they used by just having a um like here's a section of track here's a section of track here's a section of track and then join them together rather than <coughs> yeah I, I think yeah coming back to what we said a lot already in the previous games but having sort of little modules of content as well yeah, exactly. maybe saying putting an S, a particular S bend in or maybe like just just oil slicks and something that slows you down will be enough for you to go, oh god, this map has a has an S bend followed by an oil slick in it. This is gonna be yeah. so so sort of just little defining characteristics for each map will be quite nice. But, but fundamentally a game that that if the controls were a bit more meaningful would would have been quite fun. Would have definitely been fun to, I mean <laughs> it was fun as it is, yeah. just in a slightly different way to I think was intended. Alright, I, I think we should probably finish up there. So um, Thanks for watching, we will be uh, back with our final video shortly.